Oh, sh In this video, we're going to attempt some fiberglass repair on our Meridian 341 transom door using West Marine's gel coat repair kit. The transom door had stress cracks by the top rail and also on the side by the hinge. The boat was obviously out of the water and winterized for the winter. So the plan was to take the door off the hinges and bring it home to work on it in the basement. One of the hinges had some sealant securing it to the door. Apparently in the past, the previous owner had repaired a loose screw and put some sealant behind the hinge, making it a little more difficult to remove. It looks like we had a castaway for the winter. Once our friend was out of the way, it was on to check out the damage. It looked like the screws were not as tight in the door as they should have been. So one of my plans will be to refill these holes with Marine Tex to give the screws a nice new surface to grip onto. I'll also want to remove all this old sealant that was put between the door and the hinge. No spiders were harmed in the making of this video. I was happy I could take the door home for the winter. It'd be a lot easier to do the work in a heated basement than outside in the freezing upstate New York temperatures. In the past, we used this gel coat scratch patch for some small repairs, but this one was a little bit more involved. And we wanted to try West Marine's gel coat repair kit, which claimed to have everything needed to do small fiberglass gel coat repairs. Inside the kit, it included a small mylar piece of plastic, the hardener for the fiberglass resin, an ample amount of fiberglass polyester gel paste, several tubes of hardener, white, black, and a brown color, and also one ice cream mixing stick. And lastly, we can't forget the one piece of sandpaper, 100 grit, that was included in the kit. Which we found out is not sufficient. You're going to need to purchase various grits. I recommend the wet or dry style to get a really good finish. You will also need some mixing containers. I found these small Jell-O shot cups which worked out perfectly for mixing the gel polyester gel coat and the hardener, along with the coloring agents. You'll want to pick up some acetone for cleanup and for surface prepping. You'll want to get your hand on some cleaning rags. I used microfiber cloths that were clean. I soaked it with the acetone and wiped it all down to make sure we had no more grease, grime, or wax on the finish. I next taped up the area as close as possible to the scratch that I'm going to work on to protect the surfaces from any other scratches. To get access to this scratch, I needed to remove the rail mount cup that was installed just above where the scratch or the crack had occurred. The stainless steel cup is just mounted with a wooden lag bolt which comes out easily with a socket. The cracks in the fiberglass were originally quite thin and not very deep. I used a Dremel type tool to gouge it out deeper so the fiberglass resin would adhere to it much better than the smaller crack that was originally there. Once the surfaces were prepped and taped, it was on to mixing the gel coat. The instructions say to work with small batches. 
and I didn't need too much for these repairs. So I started with about a teaspoonful of the resin. I then added a small amount of the white coloring to try to match it up with the gel coat. I found that these tubes of coloring agents were not filled to capacity and I was going to run out of white rather quickly. The black and brown, you barely use it. You just put a little dab of brown and that got me very close to the color of my gel coat. What comes in handy is you could mix this all up before putting hardener in to check for the color against the gel coat. Once the color is to your satisfaction, add the required amount of hardener. The instructions call for four drops of hardener for each teaspoon of gel coat. Once you're satisfied with the color, use the included sticks to just smear it on and get it in all the cracks. It doesn't have to look pretty at this step. That's what the Mylar plastic is for, or so I thought. This clear Mylar plastic works great in theory. You're able to see through it. It's relatively firm, a little firmer than a plastic, regular plastic wrap or saran wrap. And it adheres to the gel coat pretty well when you're smoothing it out. It enables you to get rid of any air bubbles and get a nice smooth finish without even much sanding. The instructions say, let this sit for about an hour before removing the film. I was pretty excited to remove the film and see how it worked out. I waited the one hour and it was a warm basement so I expected everything to dry rather quickly. Maybe I got the hardener wrong or I didn't wait long enough, but it pulled off some pieces where it shouldn't have. I used the 100 grit sandpaper that came with the kit just to scuff it up to prep it for the next coat. Clean it all up with some more acetone and get ready for the next repair. Being I had no more Mylar plastic from the kit, I wanted to come up with something else to use. I found that regular cellophane plastic clear wrap was too thin for the gel coat, so I tried a thicker clear plastic from a Ziploc bag. It looked like it was going to work okay. So I mixed up a new batch of gel coat, matched the color again, and put on a new coat on the crack. The Ziploc bag looked to be working pretty well, but it was a little more flimsy than the Mylar, so I used some tape to hold it down in place. This time around I wasn't taking any chances. I wasn't going to wait an hour. I'll be back tomorrow. The moment of reckoning. The plastic appeared in decent shape. It didn't shrivel up like the cellophane wrap. So my hopes were high, but I wanted to be really extra cautious pulling this off. I was somewhat pleased with the result. Much better than it was before. It wasn't perfect, but it still needed quite a bit of sanding and buffing. This was a difficult location to do a fiberglass repair. Being it was right on the edge of the door, I used a sanding block to try to get some of the higher edges of the repair first. Once I got the repair flush to the surrounding fiberglass, I switched to the wet or dry sandpaper at a finer grit. I started with the 400 and worked my way to the 1000 grit sandpaper, prepping it for the final compound. I used some Meguiar's liquid rubbing compound and a wool buffing pad to buff it down even more. The finish was looking pretty good. I compounded the entire door 
and the next step was to use the polish and the wax. I used Meguiar's 3-in-1 wax for the final step. I put a new pad on the buffing machine and buffed the entire door to a high gloss finish. Finally wiped the whole door down with a microfiber cloth and was pretty pleased with the result. I'm almost a little concerned that the door will be shinier than the rest of the boat. So it didn't come out perfect, but I'm by no means a professional. I would definitely use this kit again. My only complaint is it doesn't seem to be enough of the white coloring agent. And it would be nice if there was some more mylar, but the Ziploc bag fix seemed to work pretty good. So that concludes our review of the West Marine Gel Coat Repair Kit. Hope you enjoyed the video. And please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.